What's up, Juniors? How you doing? All right, we're talking about the Mexican-American War today, and that war pivoted the primary conflict in America away from party-based politics of Whigs versus Democrats and moved it into <clears throat> an emphasis on the sectional differences between Northerners and Southerners. So this whole <clears throat> unit, we've really been talking about the growth of sectional difference, sectional conflict and division, and of course the main cause of it being <clears throat> disagreement about slavery, okay? So we see that now, <clears throat> that sectional division taking center stage as a result of the Mexican-American War, and in particular as a result of the question surrounding whether or not slavery would be allowed to expand into the territories acquired from Mexico, including California, New Mexico, and Texas, okay? All right, so, you know, the Mexican-American War, look, I mean, it, it comes right out of Polk's presidency, right? His whole thing, which we talked about for a couple of days already, was expansion, westward expansion, manifest destiny, and <clears throat> manifest destiny, expansion by conquest if necessary, right? And this was the Democrat platform. And the Republic, uh, sorry, the Whigs opposed it. They weren't opposed to expansion, but they were opposed to expansion on the basis of conquest. And of course, their vision for America was that it would be a moral example of democracy abroad, right? Not simply uh, <clears throat> an empire extending into the West, okay? Well, <clears throat> um, the... Uh, <laughs> Polk's focus, as we talked about, was especially on Oregon and on Texas. He gets Texas annexed. He gets um, <clears throat> Oregon. He's negotiating with the British. And, of course, he wants the boundary of Oregon and Canada, British territory, to be around the uh, 54th parallel. But he compromises on that, and he gets Oregon's border defined at the 49th parallel. Okay. So he doesn't go to war with Britain, but he, but he does ensure that <clears throat> Oregon territory south of the 49th parallel will be free for American white settlement, right? Now, <clears throat> um, he's also encouraging people in California, white people to move into California, and encouraging them to be ready to rise up in rebellion should the United States go to war with Mexico. Okay, and he's got the United States Navy on the coast in the Pacific with instructions to be ready to seize ports in California if the war breaks out. Okay, um, <clears throat> all right, well, the Californians, right, and you get more and more white people settling there, um, and, and the Mexican American population that was there, the rancheros, the ranchers, a lot of them are uh, already kind of like suspicious and wary of Mexican government they see themselves as um, deserving maybe more self-government. So yeah, they're not exactly thrilled maybe with all these white people coming in, but they're also <clears throat> not necessarily naturally opposed to them. And they are a little bit, um, <clears throat> you know, suspicious of the Mexican government, which is very far away, and they want their own kind of self-government thing going on. So they, Americans, short, what I'm trying to say here is that <clears throat> the white settlers are trying to get the rancheros, the Mexican-Americans, to join them in resisting Mexican rule from Mexico City, right? All right, and as the rumors in 1846 are kind of, uh, you know, cultivating that the U.S. is going to go to war with Mexico, why are there rumors? Well, because everyone knows Polk wants California and wants New Mexico, but they also know that Mexico, Mexico has refused to sell California and New Mexico. He's got in Texas, but he's in, and he settled the Oregon question, but it now is California and New Mexico, and Mexico has refused to sell those territories, okay? And also the United States and Mexico are still not clear on where the border of Texas is. Polk wants it all the way down to the Rio Grande. So there's these, like, points of conflict with Mexico, the border of Texas and the south, What's going to happen with New Mexico and what's going to happen with California? So all of that, there's these rumors that war is going to break out, okay? In California, the rumors lead to an uprising and the brief existence of a bear republic, um, which is then going to seek to become U.S. territory as soon as the war breaks out with Mexico, and, which it does in 1846. There were some uh, federal troops that were sent down into Texas 
uh, I believe down by the Rio Grande, right? Because Polk says that's where the border is in the south. There's a skirmish with some Mexican troops, and that's the beginning of the war. And the Whigs were against the war. They vote against the declaration of war. But then once the Democrat majority gets the war declared, there are, the Whigs do support um, you know, promoting the war by approving funds for the army. Okay, and The whole thing is an American victory from beginning to end. Okay, you, you, you have the fall of Santa Fe in New Mexico in August of 1846, a few months after the war breaks out. A few months later, in January of 1847, California is fallen to the United States, is now part of the United States, been taken. Um, and then there's just over the next several months going into 1847, a series of victories as the Americans push south and capture Mexico City. And then are going to force a negotiation with the Mexican government, which at this point is back under the control of Santa Ana. Okay. And um, the ambassador down there negotiating the treaty, um, you know, he is told that he has to come back to Washington because some of the Democrats want him to demand all of Mexico to come to the United States, not just Texas at the border of the Rio Grande, New Mexico, and California, but all or like half of Mexico now. And this guy's like, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, and he's told, you better come back then by Polk. But then this guy has the opportunity to get Santa Ana to uh, agree to the treaty, the original points, which is the border of Texas at the Rio Grande, New Mexico, and California falling, going to the Americans. And he's like, okay, I'm just going to do it. He goes forward with it. It's the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1848. And Polk, when he gets this treaty, <laughs> it was against his wishes, but he says, look, actually, we're going to go forward with this because the Whigs are much more likely to vote for this thing. And we need their support in the Senate to approve the treaty. And that's what happens. They approve the treaty. Okay. And that's the Mexican-American War. You add a huge amount of territory. Really, yeah, I think you add more territory under Polk than even under Jefferson with the Louisiana Purchase. Okay. Because it's all of Texas, New Mexico, California, and Oregon. Okay. All right. Now, uh, that's the Mexican-American War. But what we need to talk about in the next bit of lecture is <clears throat> its relationship to slavery and the emergence then of this virulent conflict between North and South over the issue of slavery.